Welcome, welcome on into the first round fantasy podcast. Your home for second round advice. Your first choice for second round content. Jacob Bartley, Gabriel Maramontes. Jacob, it's week fourteen. We've made it. This is make or break it time. How you doing, buddy? Before we get into all that, just where's your sanity level at going into week 14 of the fantasy football season? Oh, if like, if this is the sanity line, I'm down here. All right. Oh, no. Because Wait, I'm, so that means you're not saying, I mean, that no. means like you're calm. I guess we didn't gauge the levels. So if you're no, below but, the sanity line, you're normal. No, or, I, oh, opposite. Opposite. So yeah. you're like way up here then. Oh, you're, okay. Yeah. This is sane this is insane so i'm down yeah oh, okay so the lower we go the more insane we get yes Got absolutely it. so you are insane competent i'm in insane. way too many win and get ins and <laughs> i'm also there's a league that i am and look i don't want to be like you know the wambulance over here but look i am I have the third most points in the league, and this is in the real league, the three keeper league that we play in. The third aye, most aye, points, aye. and I am out of the playoffs. I'm in seventh place. All the six, the six playoff spots have been locked in. I'm out of the playoffs. No. I have way more points than everybody else, other than the two that are above me. And I, um, so I lost two matchups early in the earlier in the year. Oh, by one spot. point, I lost two matchups by one point. And if I would have won those, if I would have won one of those matchups, I would be in the playoffs. And this applies again. I'm I'm gonna keep telling people this. We're headed towards two matchups per week, one against the median. But I'll save that for the future. And you know what? You are commissioner in about a. Uh... I'd say Two over leagues. half of the league. Well, I mean, it's a quarter of the league. Oh, I guess I'm co-commissioner in, in some leagues too. So you have a say if we're going to be moving that way. All I right? think we got to experiment with one league first. Um, sure. And to get it going. So we'll talk. Maybe this off season we'll talk. Because I'm moving our dynasty league to sleeper. That some of If anyone from our league is viewing this, this is the first time they're hearing about it. <laughs> but uh, And sleeper, sleeper does allow that. Yeah. So we'll see. All right, well, Jacob, it was kind of like a spoiler alert. I wanted to get into all your fantasy goodness in a minute. But before oh. that, I had to welcome everybody in. So welcome on in to the First Round Fantasy Podcast. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe. I get it. We earn it sometimes. But if you're just feeling nice today, feel free to do so. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at First Round Fantasy. You can find us here on YouTube at First Round Fantasy. And you can find us wherever you listen to your podcast, most notably Apple or Spotify. Um, a couple of news and notes to get things going before we jump into our dark horses of the week. Jimmy G out for the season. Is it Brock Purdy time, Jacob? And are your Niners still Super Bowl bound? I I think they're still in the mix. Like they're one of the four or five teams that can go all the way. But I I don't know, man. Look, Brock Purdy did a good job the game that he came in. But to say that. Oh, like no worries. The defense and the the playmakers are going to carry us. That's probably true, but I just think there's something about you know the way the players play for Jimmy. Like they love him. Not to say they don't like Brock Purdy. There was a camaraderie around him. They were hyping up Purdy too, but they all been through so much together with Jimmy, and it would have been nice for them to all go into battle together. And it's just not going to happen. So I think they're going to be fine. I do think Jimmy is more prone to make mistakes than maybe let's say a rookie where Shanahan can kind of just like, you know, uh, kind of mold him into exactly what he wants him to be. So I think there will be less turnovers from the quarterback position, but still I would much rather have Jimmy Garoppolo under center. Well, of course anybody would much rather have Jimmy Garoppolo over center. And by now it's Wednesday. So you've already heard about Brock Purdy's performance. You've already heard about his average depth of target, this number they keep throwing around. Right. What I want to know is it is common and it is fact that when there's a young inexperienced QB leading the game, leading the charge, he tends to hyper-target someone. 
can we expect big things from Debo going forward, mm-hmm. knowing that he's kind of had an up and down year? Or does that role maybe fall to George Kittle or Debo Samuel? Or like we saw last week, Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield with his seven targets and seven catches. So I think that's the answer is Christian McCaffrey because, you know, we see, I think, I believe right away he will. Oh no. He threw a touchdown to Kyle use Uh, yes. Uh, I believe so. But I didn't, I thought I could have sworn CMC had a touchdown. CMC but, did have a touchdown. Yeah. So I was going to say, yeah, he had a, a, a receiving touchdown. If I'm not mistaken, I'll double check, but keep talking. Yeah. So I do think, look, if, but you put any quarterback in that offense right now, having CMC as a safety blanket is just going to do wonders for them. So I, I I can't imagine Brock Purdy like not going to him. And I think that's the safest bet. Look, I'm worried about Ayuk now. I'm worried about Kittle. Um, but I'm not worried about Debo and CMC. I think they're going to, they're going to be safe with this injury. They're going to be relied upon even more. And especially since we lost Elijah Mitchell, I know, other guys are stepping up, Jordan Mason, but I keep calling him Shaq Mason. Heavily rely on Debo and CMC. So I think you can expect a lot of work from them. I don't I I think the Ayuk being a solid wide receiver two days, I'm they might be over for this season. Wait, you said Debo being a solid wide receiver? No, two? I'm saying Ayuk. Oh, those Ayuk. days yes, are yes, over because yes, yes. him and Jimmy were having a, a great year together before this. Well, let me just tell you this. It does reflect in our rankings. CMC, Debo are the guys that I'm going with. We'll get a chance to talk about those a little bit later on. Uh, The Niners lost. Apparently, they were in – who would have thought in week 14 in 2022 we would be in the Baker Mayfield uh, pre-sweepstakes. And uh, apparently, the Niners were. They lost out to the Los Angeles Rams who acquired Baker Mayfield. Does this do anything for that offense? Are you still looking at all of those options kind of like, meh? I mean, you got Van Jefferson, Tutu Atwell, Tyler Higby. Um, I don't really know who else at this point. Cam Akers, that backfield is 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 Kyron Williams was a dark horse last week. Didn't pin out very well. No, we don't know what's going on. Can we just <laughs> move on? Do we just keep on going until we see something before we talk about it? Yeah, it's. It, I mean, I don't. I can't see any fantasy, uh, you know, ramifications from this. Like, it's not going to get much better. It, you know, if Cooper Cup <laughs> exactly. was there, I would say, oh, cool, like. I think Cooper Cup could possibly make Baker Mayfield, you know, viable. Not for a fantasy starter, but like, you know, you have Cup on the field, it's going to make everybody on the offense better. But sure. we don't even have Cooper Cup. Like, it's just a disaster over there. Oh, so, no, no, I mean, I could see a situation where like maybe he has chemistry with Van Jefferson, you know, who knows? And awesome. maybe he becomes a flex option. But, and then obviously, just because running back is so thin, if Cam Akers is going to get the type of usage you got last week, and you got to remember he had two touchdowns last week. What do we always say about touchdowns? They're fluky. Mm-hmm. So, That's like, fluky. his fantasy day looks nice, but is he going to get two touchdowns every week? No way. So even Cam Akers and Kyron Williams are, like, borderline droppable, you know? So mm-hmm. Yeah, it's sad times in L.A., but uh, I just found out recently, you know, thanks for telling me, big bro. But uh, my brother's going to the Rams and Raiders game. So they're going to take what? the trip on down to L.A. I don't know if I was wow. invited. I, we kind of, like, talked about it. And I'm just like, I don't – was I invited? He bought the tickets at the beginning of the season. Uh, regardless, uh, something to take away. But, yeah, I think the Raiders are going to go in and get a win. Nice little three-game win streak. It's nice sometimes in a fantasy podcast to just talk about the NFL and obviously talk about yeah. our teams, man, because we have to. And the, the, the Niners are – you know, in it, in the discussion every year and the Raiders play their, might play their way into the discussion. So it's kind of cool to look forward to um, the bipocalypse. We thought it happened. It did, but this is part two, right? So it's happening again on a more um, important, much more important week, much more important week. We're talking about the saints, the Ch- uh, Chicago bears. I'm doing this because I listed the running backs, but not the teams. So I'm trying to get teams. but it's the saints, the bears, the Colts, the Falcons, uh, the Packers, and the Washington Commanders. I believe that's six. Treat me if I'm right. But uh, there's a lot of notable running backs in there. And it's weird because I read an article earlier this week where it was like, this week, it's not necessarily the 
it's not that bad because you're not missing the power, the powerhouse backs that we usually see, or like the powerhouse players that we usually see. And in my mind, I'm like, well, dude, if you would have like did, if you would have read just anything, you would have noticed that this is a huge week. So these guys that are missing out, we're talking about guys like Terry McLaurin. We're talking about a slew of running backs that we'll get into in just a little bit that are impacting your fantasy lineups when it matters most. And Jacob, now is your time to let us in into your fantasy life. If you're listening, let us into your fantasy life. Tyler Cooper's listening. My favorite two gurus. My favorite hey. guy on Facebook gaming. Go check him out. Get a chicken chicken winter dinner over there playing PUBG <laughs> at Coach Coop. Uh, but yeah, Tyler Cooper, how are your leagues looking? Victor Cardina, how are your leagues doing? I need you both to win next week. Uh, okay, cool. Good to know. Nice. I'm guessing you're one of our top. You're probably that guy in first or second or third place, I'm guessing. But uh, how are your other leagues doing? Jacob, how are your other leagues doing? <laughs> we heard your Rio drama. Yes. How's it going everywhere else? So I – look, I've never revealed how many leagues I play in. I am think I'm going to keep it that way. But yeah, keep it that way. I will talk it's about – <laughs> like – Obviously, I want to win money, and that's what like the public leagues are for. But what I really care about are the leagues that I play with friends and family in, and it it's like uh, the money in those leagues kind of comes second for me. It's more about the bragging rights. So I sure. really, really want to win those leagues, especially the leagues we've been playing in for nine years, for seven years, and I've never won. I want to win those leagues really bad. So I'm in six leagues where with friends and family. And I'm already out in one, which I talked about. Mm. The other five, I'm still alive. So I am I have to win and need two others to lose um, in your dynasty league. But that's very, very unlikely. Very, very unlikely. And Wait, then in two think... other leagues... Oh, what were you going to say? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. In two other leagues, I am uh, I have to basically win to get in. But... Uh, there's everybody so close, like the four through seventh seed is all like jumbled. So even if I win, I could still not make it. It depends on what happens with other teams. And you're in, you're in those leagues as well. Um, and then in only really only, I guess you could say, okay, in two leagues, I've secured a playoff spot guaranteed. Sure. So, so yeah, it's been, it's a roller coaster, man. <laughs> it's like, it's all over the place. It's all over the place, but I'm excited. That's I'm good, excited man. for the, the you know what the playoffs like look, it's all fun and games during the season, right? But when it's playoff time, I'm so stressed because nah, don't be dude. Well, don't no, be. because like you're I, a pro. I take it casually during the season. I'm like, whatever, like, oh, you know, I'll I'll make it in half my leagues, hopefully. And then once it gets to playoff time, I'm like super like, oh my goodness, like my players better perform or I'm going to be so upset. So uh, it's coming. It's here. Yeah, I feel it, man. Uh, in, in similar boats, similar boats, uh, the most important league to me by far is probably your dynasty league. I just love the league in that. I love I love the, the interactions we get mm -hmm. in that league. I love the camaraderie of that league. Uh, most notably, I love my story. Returning champ looking to establish his place back on the throne started at the year two and six it wasn't yeah looking good. i was i thought i was i counted you out i'm not gonna lie i started counted year two you and out six i have raced back to eight and five uh looking to i'm in the second seed right now but i'm looking at the standings and there are five teams because i do not have a secure playoff spot at eight and five currently right now so there are five teams vying and it could go any which way and technically uh, Joe looks like he's going to get in. So, Joe, if you're listening, congrats to you because there are only four teams that are eight and five. Yeah, three teams he, that are eight and five. No, he locked up a spot already. You can see yeah, I'm he's looking. the he, only one. He's the only one that's locked he's it guaranteed. up. So, congratulations, Joseph. So, that league's pretty interesting to me. And then, of course, we can't forget about beer drinkers where I've completely just rerouted my team up and down, and only one team has claimed a fantasy spot, playoff spot there, and that is Justin. A Another ton of eight and fives and seven and sixes. <laughs> yes. A ton of them. A ton of them. Other than that, couldn't care less. Uh, my pick six league, I'm on the outside looking in. 
but this week is a winner get in. So we'll see how it goes there. Your family league has been fun. It's been a good time. I can't wait to invite you to our family league. And guess what? It didn't actually start this year, but I would hope you'd be a part of my family league next year when it starts up. Um, and then what else? Oh, Rio, I'm in the playoffs. And there's a couple of other leagues I choose not to talk about. There's the league that we co-commissioned together, Jacob. Surprisingly, we are on the outside looking in, and we have to win essentially, and a lot of other things have to happen for us to get in. Do you still and, have uh, a chance also? We still have a chance in that league, I, I'd like to assume, because we yeah. have we're only one win out to having like the same record as like three yeah. other people. And we have the we are, I think we're like fourth in points in that league. And the top six teams, there's two of them that are yeah. Like so way the below two us. teams that we need to lose, we have more points than. Yes. So right. if they both lose and we both win, we would both get in, right? I mm. think so. That's mm. crazy. Well, we're rep we're representing first round fantasy hard here, mm. and I've noticed that we've got on a long tangent. That's enough hey, about the us. Worst, the worst is losing in your own leagues. Like I, that's that one. Those sting the most. It, it it happens, man. I mean, it's look okay. how I'm doing in franchise. It's just, it's, okay. it, it's just. At least it's dynasty. You have the future to look forward to. I have the future. Six to look first forward. round picks. You know what? And I hope you took it as so rude. I wasn't trying to be rude when I said I hope you lose. Like, I wish you all the success in the world, but lose this week. I, I just need that. I need those top four picks. Absolutely not. I'm willing this into existence. I'm getting that eight seed. <laughs> Have you That's seen my team? My team yeah, is great. loaded. If your team makes it in, it's it's great. Yeah. Uh, how about those Niners star? Yeah, man, we talked about the Niners. They're looking good. And then Pascal <laughs> comments. Wait, what's going on here? Star Drew, I, Listen I mean, to forgive Coach me if I didn't guys. know this already. Are you a Cowboys fan? I don't know, but the 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 hate speech. Oh wait. Oh no. Are you? Comments. Is he? Are you a Miami fan, Star Drew? Um. Yeah, Star Drew, let us know. Let us or know. Did you, what I you think are. it might be because he got the call wrong because he was calling Miami to win the game. Mm. But uh, it might be just because of that. But I love your passion, Star Drew. Love your passion. I mean, passion can turn into hateful words, guys. Keep it down in there. All right. Keep it down. Uh, but we both appreciate you guys coming out, keeping the chat hot. And uh, hopefully, we get some new fresh faces in here today or some returning ones. Uh, he says, Hey, I'll shut. <laughs> okay. Gosh, guys, so rude. It's like I tell my kids, man. Get kind to one another. Be kind. That's our sixth. Hey, I, I do. Since you know, before I forget, I don't want to forget sure. before the season's over. Tyler Cooper, you're the man. I'm so glad we play fantasy with you because both me and Gabe we're obsessed with fantasy football, and I feel like you're on our same level. Like you're every time we ask you to join the league, you're always down. So we appreciate you, man. We appreciate you, Coach Coop. Hashtag Listen to Coach. It's good times, good times. He'll get a <laughs> comment here in like 10 minutes. Uh, oh, he says, I am both – Starter says I am both a Dolphins and Cowboys fan. Nice. Oh, not bad. Is that a – correct me if I'm wrong. Is that AFC, NFC? Yeah. Is it? Because I mean, the Dolphins well, are Cowboys AFC. Cowboys are NFC. And, Dolphins yeah. are AFC. There you go, That's man. okay. I'm cool with that as long as you don't have like two NFC teams in the same division or something. Like, yeah. Nah, it just gets too crazy. Jacob, are you ready for some dark horses, man? Let's do it. Let's get into it. No, mine is not Sky Moore. Why do you keep yes. doing this? Yes. What are you, you know, doing? You didn't notice until the show started. Uh, if For those of you who don't know, I, I last couple of weeks, Stop. I've been messing with Gabe, and I write down some random player as his dark horse, and I'll, I put down, like, Sky Moore, 35 points guaranteed, <laughs> like, as if Gabe put it in there. It's so funny. I don't like it. Uh, it's not funny. No one's laughing. You're literally just laughing at yourself. <laughs> so, like, the funny thing is, it's not the funny, funny thing is, the I'm first time I did it, do you remember what player I used? And you know who my dark horse is this week? That's the ironic thing. Is oh, I, DJ Char. <laughs> the player I used as a joke player the first time is actually my dark horse this week. Which well, is I kind of said it, but so you basically segued into it. Jacob, give us your week 14 dark horse pick. Yeah, so I'm going with – all right, so in the notes, to be fair, and you've done this before, so I'm going to do it once. <laughs> I'm kind of going with DJ Chark slash maybe Jamison Williams. And what I mean by this is that one of them are going to go off. I, if I have to put my money on one of them, it's going to be DJ Chark. 
And by go off, I mean like 15 fantasy points. But because only because, look, G.J. Chark's a veteran. He's been playing all year. Jameson Williams barely got any snaps last week. He was targeted once and didn't even – he uh, he didn't catch it. To say they're easing him in is being, uh, you, know, you know, that's like – I don't even think you could say they're easing him in. It's less than that. <laughs> so we don't even know. He might get a one target mm-hmm. again this week, or it could be a blow up game for Jameson Williams. But the Detroit Lions are on a roll. Obviously, Amon Ross St. Brown is going to get his. DeAndre Swift uh, is looking promising coming off of his uh, good game last week. But look, there's no TJ Hawkinson there anymore. And before. When I imagine in my mind Jameson Williams come back, I'm like, wow, Amon Ra, uh, Swift. I didn't even think DJ Chark was going to come back, but Chark, Jameson Williams, uh, Hawkinson. I'm like, that's a lot of mouths to feed in the pass game. But removing uh, Hawkinson, which he's doing great in uh, in Minnesota, removing Hawkinson from that equation kind of makes it viable that a they can feed these guys and at least two or three of them are going to have really good fantasy weeks. And uh, DJ Chark, he had a really good game last week. I know he was injured for most of the season, but he's, he's finally just coming back right now. And I, I just think, look, it's possible that Jamison Williams has, has a blow up game and I'm just checking now, but yeah, DJ Chark, well, he's had two, all right. He had five targets the week before and six targets last week, but last week, five catches for 98 yards, which yeah. is really good. Not and bad. Jared Goff is playing well. Look, it was against Jacksonville, who um, who's a friendly op, a defense for wide receivers. But now they're playing Minnesota, who is even friendlier to wide receivers. Um, so, like I said, Amon Ra is a must start. I would say based on bye weeks and running back situations, Swift is a must start, which is crazy. But if you're looking at a flex option in Detroit, I think you can roll with uh, DJ Chark. And if you're in like, cause I'm in a league where like, I didn't even have anybody to start and I checked the waiver wire. There's nobody. And I just have to pick up a random dude, throw him in my lineup and just wish for the best. And, and, and that's uh, what's happening. So I'm saying, I'm saying that because there might be a situation out there where somebody has to start Jameson Williams. It's possible. We have no idea with him. He's the unsafe one, but I think DJ Chark has a solid game this week. They D- Jared Goff has been playing much, much better over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and the Lions, because of that, they've ran into a nice little streak here. I think they're, what, three and four and two, something like that. A weird winning streak, but not really a winning streak. But they've well, just they only well. lost to the Bills in like the past five weeks. Yeah, so they've been playing well. That's what I was trying to say beautifully, and you said it perfectly. So thank you. But um, no, it, it's kind of interesting. DJ Chark or Jameson Williams. I don't think Jameson Williams is ready yet. He came in, he barely played last week. Um, snap share was low. DJ Chark certainly. He's also one of those players that has, uh, you know, any given week he can be that high touchdown target type of guy who maybe falls in the end zone. And that's kind of what you're banking on this week. I don't know what his sleeper projections are, but if you let me know, that would be great. But ultimately, um, spoiler alert, he's not in my top 30, but that's why I have you here to critique it and uh, chalk it up so we can talk about that a little bit later. Maybe he does find himself in the top 30 after we have a brief discussion. But uh, Jacob, nonetheless, that's a pretty good pick, man. What else? Yeah, he's projected for 9.7 points in on Sleeper. And uh, like it or not, I mean, I'm starting him this week. It, I'm starting him in the Dynasty League where I have to win to get in. I need others to lose, but I have to win to get in. Starting DJ Chark, so I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Oh, It's tough, man. And I'm going to say this now, and I'm going to say it again in a little bit here because I kind of need to. But – with six teams on by, you just you're making these types of decisions. And yes, there may not be the fantasy stars that are out these this week. I mean, but Jonathan Taylor is one of them. I would argue that Terry McLaurin is a fantasy stud, right? You're forced into making tough decisions. And I think it kind of speaks to both of our dark horses this week, starting with yours. Uh, that was Jacob's dark horse, DJ Chark for week 14 of the fantasy football season. 
Absolutely. Um, so let me just give people an example of how much of a bipocalypse we are in. So my running backs in one league are Jonathan Taylor, Antonio Gibson, no. and Tyler Tyler no. I, Tyler oh. Algier, right? So my only running backs healthy are yeah healthy and playing this week are Rashad White and Tyrion Davis Price. Let's go. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go to the waiver wire and pick somebody up. Okay, <laughs> top guys: Tony Jones, Travis Homer, Kenyon Drake, Dontre Hilliard, Justin Jackson, Mike Boone, Jamichael Dude. Hasty. What am I supposed to do? So the look, I know I'm starting Kyron Williams in that league. That's how disgusting this week is. Terrible by apocalypse. I know, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Switching. And I have to win to get in. By the way, you so. got this. You got this. You got this, man. People have come back from far worse. Uh, Purple Cat in the chat, he says, Slayton or Hollywood Brown this week? Uh, I'll take me some Marquise Brown this week. Easier matchup against New England. Uh, the defense has kind of not been what it was over the last few years. Slayton, on the other hand, has a tough Philadelphia matchup. We saw what they did last week. I'm going Marquise Brown. Um, he's going to take some carpet. Set. Now, there is the chance that uh, Rondale Moore makes a return to that lineup. If anything, it helps him a little bit more. And I think Rondale Moore returns to that manufactured kind of target share that he was getting before, like more behind the scenes, those rushes outside, short screens, things like that. But I think Hollywood Brown, uh, you know, neither of these guys are going to knock the socks off of anybody, but I'm going Marquise Brown over uh, Darius Slayton this week. Jacob, you feel the same? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I would definitely – everything you said, I agree. Purple Cat? We appreciate you, man. Looks like you're new to the chat, Purple Cat. Tried to rhyme it there, but I couldn't. Uh, if we get it right, we earn it around here. So please be sure to like and subscribe. Actually, we should stop saying that. I got to rephrase that. Purple Cat, like right now because we gave you advice. But if we get it right, come back later and subscribe. That's what we earn. <laughs> but your like is just gracious for showing us kind gestures and we doing the same to you. Uh, but we also just appreciate the question. So thanks a lot, Purple Cat. Nice hearing from you. Thanks for stopping by. Star Drew says the Cowboys game isn't televised in Canada. Well, that's why you have to move to the USA, Star Drew. I mean, wow. <laughs> just kidding. Or you can get Red Zone or NFL package for however god-awful price it is because it is high. Very high. Do you, do you have the NFL package? You don't, right? No, I mean I have, I have a streaming service where I pay ten dollars a month to have Red Zone, basically. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I do. I do. I have Hulu Live, and I just pay for Red Zone. On yeah, top of that. but like, so they have like a s extra sports package, and uh, Red Zone's part of it. But as soon as fantasy football's over, I cancel it. Of course, because you, you get other it? stuff too, but I cancel it as soon as <laughs> fantasy football's over. <laughs> uh purple cat says appreciate the input nah man we appreciate you thanks for stopping by uh thanks for coming into the chat if you have any more questions feel free to send them our way jacob you ready for my dark horse of the week oh yeah i ain't gonna take any time i started from the top and i'm gonna say it again uh this week is is a difficult week i had a hard time i texted jacob yesterday literally it felt like it was midnight but it was probably like four o'clock in the afternoon. It's just because my bedtime's so early. I was stressing. I was researching. I was trying to find guys that I thought were good plays this week. Uh, and this is kind of what I came up with. So take it with a grain of salt. And that's Raheem Mostert running back for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, listen, they play the Chargers this week. Uh, they give up 135 yards a game. That's the second most in the NFL. So between him and Jeff Wilson, there's love to be shared. And I think, I think, uh, you know, Raheem Mostert is going to have a good part of that. There is a semblance of consistency there. All right. And what I mean by that is the Miami Dolphins acquired Jeff Wilson back up in week nine. And since then, it's been steadily noticed that Jeff Wilson has out-touched Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert in that three-game span where they've played together, keep in mind he missed week 12. Uh, Raheem Mostert has averaged about eight carries a game, while Jeff Wilson has averaged about 14, 15 carries a game. So I understand that. However, Raheem Mostert is still having a pretty good average yards per carry. He's averaging about 4.6, which puts him in the top half of the league in terms of that. And I like it. You know, I think going up a, a team that was probably dog embarrassed. I was going to put a bad word in between dog and embarrassed. But uh, a team that was embarrassed, honestly, playing against the San Francisco Niners last week. 
Miami's going to look to rebound, and I think Los Angeles Chargers is a nice place to start, especially with that run game. They're probably going to look to do it early, get it in quick, and uh, that's what she said. But anyway, I couldn't avoid it. I'm sorry. <laughs> when Wilson has played, I already said that part. Also, we got to hope that he gets some touch, he gets some work in the passing game as well. He's seen two targets or so in games where uh, he has played alongside Jeff Wilson. It's not pretty. These stats aren't like eye popping and off the wall, but in a week where we're missing running backs like Kamara, David Montgomery, Jonathan Taylor, you're probably were starting either Tyler Algier or Cordell Patterson over the last five weeks. Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon has started to come out. Gibson and Brian Robertson Jr. Those are names, at least to me personally, they've been inside the top 30 week in and week out, right? So, now that there are six names out, you're going to see very shortly here that Raheem Mostert is not top 10 in my rankings. He's not top 15. He's not top 20. He's maybe not even top 25. Yes, I'm saying he's outside my top 25, but he might be the closest thing to a safe bet as you can get in terms of what you're looking for. Now, I know last week he only had three points. But that San Francisco run defense is absolutely stifling. It's a complete 180 this week. I think he finds success with his minimal touches. There's even a chance he falls in the end zone, which I always say because that's what we're hoping for here when we call out these dark horses, right? Um, He's a viable low-end flex play this week with high-end flex upside. He could break a run for one for 35 and a touchdown, or we could see his typical workload, which is right around that eight for 45 range. Maybe he throws in a pass or two and has some fantasy success there. I like him better than Kareem Hunt this week, Gus Edwards, Cam Akers, who is honestly in a better matchup himself against the Las Vegas Raiders. But we don't really know what's happening with that Los Angeles backfield. Uh, Jarek McCann, Van Jefferson, and DJ Chark. I like it better than all of those guys. So for those reasons, and really that's about it this week because it's a thin, thin field out there. Uh, And I will say just personally too, I have Raheem Mostert in three leagues. I am starting him in all three of those leagues over guys like Gus Edwards, over guys like Cam Akers, and over guys like Jarek McKinnon. I don't really have Ben Jefferson or DJ Chark shares, but I saw him in my rankings and I thought, oh, those might be passing as flex plays. And so those are the conclusions that I came up with. Uh, Jacob? I was muted. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I uh, Look, I think with this pick, you, you could have went Jeff Wilson Jr. as well if you, if you wanted, but that's kind of like easier. I think people are, you know, most people would say, oh, I'll start Jeff Wilson over Raheem Mostert. Sure, he's, sure. He's the easier start. So I think, you know, there's a chance for both of them to have success. And when there's that chance, that means there's a chance uh, that, you know, we can choose them as our dark horse and they can and they can succeed. So uh, it's not a bad call, man. They got a good, they got a great matchup this week. They got so a great I, matchup. I think there's a possibility that you place both of them in your, either, not both of them. If you have both of them, don't start both of them. Oh, actually, this week might be the week to do it, but uh, either of them can go can have a solid, solid flex play game this week. So not a bad call. Listen, man, you ask me weeks one through seven, maybe weeks one through eight. Hey, are you a matchups type guy? And I'll probably say no. But if you ask me weeks eight through 14 and into the fantasy yeah. playoffs, are you a matchup guy? Yes, because that is a sizable amount of defense. Absolutely, Injured players yeah. have come back. There's been shifting. There's been movement on the defensive end. I'm a defensive guy. I'm a defensive matchup type of guy. And especially when I'm picking low end flex plays like we are here today. Uh, so Jacob, thanks for tallying up, uh, piggybacking off me there. And, uh, that's it. Raheem Mostert running back for the Miami dolphins, my week 14 dark horse pick, man. The chat has been popping off. Jacob Jonah Bartley in the chat. He says, speaking of, Oh, by the way, really quick, before we get to Jonah Bartley's question, you said like, Hey, you could probably start Jeff Wilson here. I texted producer Jake earlier today and I asked him if he had, you know, done what he needed to do for us. And that was kind of the reason why, because I was thinking about piddle paddling over to the Jeff Wilson side, but I thought it was too easy because anybody can look at one for three and immediately say he's not, that's not going to happen to him next week. So I wanted to go with a little bit deeper. And uh, well, I think, look, a lot of times, like if you say you think Raheem Mostert's going to succeed this week, you're saying the Miami running backs, are going to succeed against 
the Los Angeles Chargers, right? Exactly. exactly. And by me, that's kind of like me. I'm saying I think the, the Detroit pass catchers are going to do well this week uh, against Minnesota. I don't know exactly go. which ones, but I'm going to put my money on DJ Chark. You're putting your money on Mostert. It, like the same things apply to like the same position on the same team. Yeah. There you go. I like your input. Jonah Bartley says, start Jeff Wilson, Pacheco, or Damian Pierce this week. Uh, for me, it's probably Jeff Wilson. I agree. Uh, I was or, I had to think about this one. So well, look, we got Pacheco's Wilson against Denver. Uh, yeah, Denver. And Damian which, Pierce just hasn't been doing well. He was my dark horse last week. Jacob likes to call those things push because technically he had an okay game. But he was under his point projection by about a point and a half. Um, I wouldn't call it a push. So I, I, I let I let the fantasy community down. And I will stand <laughs> by that. I will look to do better. Um, but yeah, I think Jeff Wilson is a well, solid play here. Yeah, I and, think a good rebound game is coming for him. Look, I think this all comes down to matchup. If you switch it around, if Pierce or Pacheco were playing the Chargers, I would probably choose them. But you have Jeff Wilson against the Chargers, Pierce against Dallas, and if look, Pierce hasn't had much patch cat, pass catching this year. And so what's going to happen? Dallas is going to slaughter them. They're going to be down, and they're going to throw a lot. And then you have Pacheco against Denver. There's a, always a possibility a, a Patrick Mahomes running back gets a few touchdowns. But do you really want to rely on that? I think Wilson's going to get most of the fantasy-friendly touches. So I would go Jeff Wilson. I'm looking here. I'm not trying to fact check you, but – Random might... viewer who asked that question. He's getting he's Pierce is getting targets, but not enough. Not enough like a PPR backwood. Uh, oh no! What is it like? Two, last, like no, three it's three, three. It's three six three three over the last. Yeah, three I mean weeks. he's got to be averaging what three a game, three, three or four a, game, a game, three and a half a game. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jonah. We appreciate that. Starter says he'll watch the Chargers Dolphins Dolphins game. It's gonna be a good game, man. Last week was like the pinnacle of NFL matchups. It was pretty cool. This week, I'm sure we can find some gems in the rough too. Uh, Star Drew says Dolphins was in the game until the last four minutes in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Tua man just did not look good. Uh, he he kind of folded there at the end. Uh, well, that's not true because he actually threw that bomb to Tyreek Hill, but that was kind of like garbage point. Well, it wasn't really garbage time. They pulled it close. Anyways, uh, okay, here's a good one: Baltimore defense against Pittsburgh or Philly D against the Giants. Mm. I am probably going the Philly D against the Giants. Um, Philly. Subpar against the run, excellent against the pass, and probably good against Daniel Jones. Uh, but also on the other side, Baltimore against Pittsburgh, I'm pretty sure Kenny Pickett is leading the league in interceptions right now <laughs> in the amount of time that he's actually played. And Baltimore's looked surprisingly good over the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Jacob, with that insight, you got anything? I mean, I like defense and kicker questions are just like uh, – just whatever just pick a random one and throw them out there because it's so unpredictable but i would go with philly if i was deciding on this one because i wouldn't say the giants offense is explosive or anything yeah yeah yeah, yeah. jacob jacob philadelphia saquon barkley might get his but also they could just totally bottle him up and outside of that daniel jones isn't going to do anything against that philly d Philly D, it is. Coach Coop, listen to Coach Coop. I bet it is. I bet it is. Thanks a lot. Jonah Bartley says, thanks, boys. No, man, thank you. Thanks for stopping by, man. We appreciate you. Let's play some Apex sometime. Uh, Jacob, you ready to get into some rankings? Let's do it. Let's do it. I forget that I have to share my screen at this point in the <laughs> evening. So let me get that up here really quick. Uh, I was looking at rushing totals earlier. Why was I looking up rushing totals? I was trying to find something in the realm. For some reason, I had this weird thought that uh, Mostert had more red zone carries than Jeff Wilson this year. But then I wasn't trying to go in and extrapolate the games that Wilson played with San Francisco and yeah. with Miami. But, uh, yeah, Wilson had, like, 21, and Moster had, like, six. So I'm pretty sure he probably got some with the Dolphins. Anyways, let's get in to some rankings this week. I'll pull mine up. Jacob's going to commentary. I go pretty fast. Keep up, baby, because we got a lot to talk about today, starting with our running backs. Let me get my share screen up here again. You know, we're working on we're working on fancy, all right? But right <laughs> now, we got the bare bones. We got the bare bones, and this is what we do around here. These are our running back rankings this week. Let me blur it into 200 so people can see. 
<laughs> We're going all the way to the top. Derrick Henry, CMC. CMC is my biggest, not my biggest actually, but he jumps up seven spots this week. The news with Jimmy Garoppolo, it's unfortunate, but with Brock Purdy in and what he's been able to do, good things are coming for CMC, and he looks to get it going and continue success against Tampa Bay this week. Uh, not a lot has changed with the other guys up there. Until we get to Tony Pollard, he's cracked the top 10 for the first time this year for me. He's moved up eight spots. They play Houston, the worst run defense in the league. You're also going to say hello to Zeke. Oh, look, he's right down there. He's jumped up 13 spots this week for me as well. My biggest loser so far, uh, Nick Chubb. He's dropped down seven spots. Deshaun Watson did not look good in his debut with the Cleveland Browns. I don't think it gets any easier this week against Cleveland. We were right. The rust was there. It was real. Hopefully they can establish the run game, but I got to see it till I believe it. I'm still respecting Chubb. He's in the top 10. He's not leaving the top 10 anytime soon. I'm just saying, temper your expectations for the big guy. DeAndre Swift was the real winner this week. He jumps up 17 spots. We finally saw him get the work he deserves. He's got no limitations. He's got no injury designations since the injury concerns started to rise just a few months ago. Uh, and for that and for that alone, playing against Minnesota, he's looking to have a big day. He finds himself rounding out the top 12 for me. Miles Sanders jumps up eight spots, takes the new, takes on the New York Giants. Not a lot of movement since then. My dark horse last week, Damian Pierce. Listen, Jacob, we were just talking about it a minute ago when we were deciding between Jeff Wilson, Damian Pierce, and uh, Isaiah Pacheco. Isaiah Pacheco is in my top 30. Matter of fact, he's at 19 this week. Damian Pierce still finds himself at 16. I don't have uh, – who was it? Who was the guy we ended up going with, Jacob? We ended up telling him to play – Oh, Jeff Wilson Jr. Jr. Jeff Wilson Jr. Jeff Wilson Jr. is in my top 30, actually. But Damian Pierce, I just have him retired. He's a, he's a man alone in that backfield. And, you know, Davis Mills was getting first-team practice reps this week. I get it. The volume is there. The production is not, but it's just a weird landscape we're in. And I, I don't feel good enough to knock him down all the way into outside of my twenties. So that's why he's still uh, the top 20 for me. James Connor coming back, Jamal Williams, Pacheco, Deontay Foreman, Latavius Murray. And then right around 22, I call it the trouble of duos. It's a really poor name i don't have any other way to say it <laughs> but it's all of these guys that are playing with their backfield mates right now and it starts with the shroud white and leonard fournette at 22 and 23 they take on san francisco this week a dreaded matchup not appetizing whatsoever uh and because of that rashad white is one spot up uh, ahead of fournette just in case tampa bay falls behind maybe it's a close game look for rashad white to get that passing down work and if he does he got the last uh, second touchdown, not the game winning touchdown, but he was spared by a touchdown just this past week. Um, that's kind of where I have them. James Cook finds himself at running back 24. His partner, not too far behind him, Devin Singletary, actually falls three spots because we've started to see over the last two weeks, James Cook actually start to take some of that workload away from Devin Singletary. Now, they've both been fantasy successful. I think they are still fantasy successful this week, but they also have a tough matchup against the New York Jets. There's my dark horse this week, Raheem Mostert at 27, along with Jeff Wilson at 25. So clearly I have Jeff Wilson in front of him this week. I'm not opposed to it. The only reason why I have them ranked so far is because there's two of them and they're splitting workload. I don't understand. That's kind of where they're at. Cam Akers, Xavion Knight, Gus Edwards round out the top 30 for me this week. Breathe. <laughs> We can start wherever you like, Jacob. Pick them apart. That's what you're here for. You're the expert, man. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Expert is a strong word, but I – and we didn't really tell everyone, but basically Gabe's handling our rankings, uh, and I – Oh, so you're I'm saying going, I'm doing a bad job. No, 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 no. I'm saying I'm <laughs> reacting. People are wondering, like, wait, why does Gabe only have rankings? Why doesn't Jacob have rankings? But, uh, yeah, so basically – we might just do this for the rest of the season. Gabe will do his rankings and, and I'll react. But no, I actually, I like a lot of your rankings. I love, love, love that where you have James, that you have James Cook in your top 30 at all and that you have him at number 24 and above Devin Singletary. I like, like, it's not necessarily a safe call, 
but I think it's the right call to be honest. So, so I love that. Um, you know, Rashad White and Fournette. Oof, I don't know about this game, and I'm not just trying to hype up my Niners, but but we'll see. Tough, I could man. see. I think only one of them will be in the top 30 this week. But I, I get where you're coming from because how do you rank them that way? Because you're just you'll have to guess which one, and so it's like that's very difficult to do. Uh, can you go back up to the top? Sure. For a what's I mean, I know the top that. is the easier part to do, but sure, I do yeah, think yeah. like choosing like who you think is going to be number one overall. It's kind of a big deal. And you got Derrick Henry uh, up there. I'm, I'm kind of mad. I traded away my only Derrick Henry share earlier this year. But it so was I, so early to get Tony Pollard and Michael Pittman. So I'm not necessarily mad because uh, Pollard's been really solid this year. Um, but, yeah, I like your, your pick of uh, Derrick Henry. And also your pick of Tony Pollard at number six. He's there, baby. It's time. He's had some great games, and they play Houston. Worst team I love against that the call. run. And it's time, man. You'll it's find out time. why pretty soon. Wait, what? Why am I going to find out why pretty soon? Oh, <laughs> I think I do know why. I mean, just look at his points per game, man. 33, 21, 36, 24. The guy's on tor- torch and things. I love he's been it. Out- it's- he's been outside my top 10 for so long, and it. hey, I'm not perfect. Right, I make mistakes, but game me. I'm talking about me. Game recognizes game, and uh, Pollard deserves to crack the top ten, and look, he finds himself at six. Look, man, there's like there's like three running backs that I've like kind of hitched my wagon to these past couple seasons, and the you know it's AJ Dillon, Ramondre Stevenson, and Tony Pollard. Like those mm-hmm. are my guys. I believed in them. AJ Dillon. Hey, he's coming. He's coming, he's coming on. on. He's the choo-choo train that could to keep see on Ramondre chilling. and Pollard. Like just warms my heart <laughs> to see them doing well. Well, there you have it. Those are your running back rankings for Week 14. Uh, not going to go through them again, but I'll go slowly for those of you here. On and I like Swift up there at number 12. He's as long. I mean, he's on the he's injury report back, again man. this week, which is sucks. But look, he's he's more talented than Jamal Williams. He just needs to stay healthy. He's coming back. He's coming back. Uh, MJ23, we see you. We'll get to you. Let's get to our wide receiver rankings here really quick, starting at the top for week 14. Man, if anything, last week was was interesting. The top stayed at the top, but at the top, I told you that they had horrible matchups last week. And most of them still came through with flying colors. Unlike the running backs who usually have horrible matchups, they seem to just have horrible matchups. The wide receivers are superheroes. And for that, we thank you. Uh, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, just uh, Jamar Chase, uh, Diggs. Diggs is actually a faller, but I don't usually notice fallers if they're one or two spots down. But he took a little bit of a dig there because he goes up the New York Jets and Sauce Gardner, the hottest rookie to play football. And I didn't mean that like in a sexy way. Like he's just a really good cornerback. Uh, AJ Brown, CD lamb over here at top seven DK Metcalf. Uh, this is now three straight weeks in a row where he's seen double digit targets. He's turning into himself. They face a middle of the road, Carolina defense. He continues that he jumps up six spots this week. He's looking to keep things going. Hopkins and Chris Godwin after that. Garrett Wilson jumps up another four spots for me this week. They take on Buffalo at Buffalo. I get it. Tredavious White is back. He's still getting eased into things. I can understand that. But Garrett Wilson is a man possessed, and he's playing great right now with Mike White in, at the helm for the New York Jets. And they look to keep that going this week against Buffalo. A.J. Brown and Jalen Waddell fall five and four spots, respectively. Uh, Jalen Waddle, most notably right outside the top 12. So that makes him a wide receiver two for me this week. Then we have Higgins, Keenan Allen falls five spots. Uh, Christian Kirk and Tyler Lockett, the DK Metcalf counterpart, uh, narrows out into my top 20. Amari Cooper, until we see things from Deshaun Watson, he will continue to fall for me. It's just not looking good right now in Cleveland. That's not to say that it won't. I'm not saying that they're the worst team in the world, but, uh, definitely have to keep an eye out on that situation. Also, if you haven't noticed, Amari Cooper's home and road splits are just 
eye popping. He plays horribly on the road. He plays great at home. They're on the road this week against Cincinnati. Debo Samuel, he's my guy. Moved up three spots, and yes, he's a Niner, and yes, he's still my guy. He moves up three spots into the top twenty this week. If anybody on this list has the potential to go high, 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 high into the top ten stratosphere, it's Debo Samuel for me. I love the move to Brock Purdy. I love the idea of that hyper-targeting. I love the usage of Debo Samuel, of what could be, the remnants of what were last year. He's a riser for me and could be rocketing into the stratosphere. DJ Moore, welcome back. Jacoby Myers at Arizona. Juju and Mike Evans, double duos here, both falling six and four spots respectively for me. Um, You know, Mike Evans, he saw four targets last week. That's it. And before that, the previous two weeks, he had seen only two to, or he's seen multiple targets, but only two catches. He continues to fall down. It doesn't get any easier against that San Francisco Giants, uh, San Francisco 49ers defense, even though they're a little bit more, you know, susceptible through the air. Still, you got to see it to believe it for me, friend. Devontae Smith moves up six spots. Joshua Palmer doesn't get too pretty after that. Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, Jerry Judy, Gabriel Davis, and Darius Slayton round out the top 30 for me this week. Uh, those are my wide receiver rankings. Jacob, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I don't disagree with you uh too much at all. Uh I do I think I Come wouldn't on, mind. Man, if, let me hear it. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if you moved Garrett Wilson up a little higher. I um <laughs> he's obviously been killing it. I mean, you moved him up four spots from last week. I just think, um, you know, earlier this year, I was, I was kind of like saying, Oh, he's going to be the guy, the top rookie wide receiver this season. And it's like, it went up and down so much, you know, other guys were looking better uh, some weeks, but I think he solidified that um, being the best rookie wide receiver this season. We'll see how it ends up going. Uh, He's been playing well with Mike White. But, uh, but yeah, I like that call and not to talk just about rookies, but, um, I know people might be down on George Pickens after last week, but I, I think you have him at 27. I think, uh, look, if you, if you look at the trend um, of his game, since Kenny Pickett is the starter, he's been so solid and every wide receiver has, um, inconsistencies. So we can't expect Pickens to, you know, put up. 15 plus fantasy points every game. He's going to have a dud. He has a great matchup this week. I think Pickens, uh, I would have Pickens a little bit higher, but those are my two notes. Fair enough, Jacob. I would want you to be a little bit more aggressive in your takes. (laughs) Uh, But you know what? That's why we started this podcast. We kind of have similar mindsets and we can debate a little bit later. I'd like, I'm not brave enough to do this yet, but so many people out there and just in the fantasy landscape in general, uh, they're so quick to throw up their rankings week in and week out. And then if players do absolutely 180, you know, their rankings just don't turn out how they are. I just love how they don't acknowledge it anymore. They just move on to the next week and keep on going. Uh, maybe there's a reason for that because it's probably not good luck for them. But also, I'd love to do something like this in the future where we kind of have Monday recaps where we look at these rankings, see how players compared, and just kind of get a view uh, I, I'd love to do it. I'm not ashamed of my rankings. We don't call ourselves experts. We're guys who love to talk no. fantasy football. Uh, but there you go. There you have it. Our running back and wide receiver rankings for week 14, the week you need it most. So tune on in. Check these out. Let us know what you think down in the comments. Uh, Jacob, let's get to some comments here because we have some very – let's go. Uh, let's <laughs> Share the screen really quick here. MJ23 says Mike White versus Buffalo or Tyler Huntley versus Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm probably going Mike White versus Buffalo here. 369 yards last week. The the Jets are not out of it. They are not out of it. They are fighting for a playoff spot. There's a reason why Mike White is still playing because he's capable of throwing the ball downfield and capable of throwing the ball in general over Zach Wilson. Um. 24 fantasy points last week, even more the week before that. I get it. Buffalo's a tough matchup, but they're not dreadful. They're they're competent. They are a middle-of-the-pack defense at the end of the day, and I like them over Tyler Huntley, who in reality in his four-game stretch last year uh, filling in for Lamar Jackson, he really only had that one big blow-up game, which was for like 45 fantasy points. Other than that, he couldn't average 17. 
So I'm kind of fading Tyler uh, uh, Huntley this week, and I favor Mike White. Jacob? Yeah, I agree. If I remember correctly, I think Huntley struggled against Pittsburgh last year when he came in for uh, for Lamar Jackson. So I'm going to go. I, would, I agree. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says uh, Ramondre Stevenson versus Arizona or Travis Etienne versus Tennessee. Wow. You got to figure out a way to start both of those, if, my guy. Yeah. I mean, uh, all right. So if I have to decide, I'm going Ramondre Stevenson. But yeah, I'm going I, Ramondre I can't Stevenson imagine well. a scenario where we're benching one of those guys, especially yeah. this week. Can I borrow ETN for my league where I'm starting uh, nobody, basically? <laughs> <laughs> Kyron Williams, <laughs> like damn, with playing with Baker Mayfield. <sighs> oh my god, that was funny. That was a, that was a good. LOL. Uh, Saquon Barkley versus Philly or Nick Chubb versus Cincinnati. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Maybe these uh, are DFS questions. Uh, they could which, be. Actually, that's not bad. We'll get to our DFS segment here which, in a moment. Here. I mean, I don't know the prices off the top of my head for those guys, but I would probably go Nick Chubb. Okay, that's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, I'd go. I'd probably go Barkley there. Honestly, I have him ranked higher. I'm going Barkley. Uh, let's see. He's got one more question. Holy cow! Let's see. Trade alert. Dynasty got off for Patrick Mahomes and Garrett Wilson for Justin Fields, Amon Ra, and Michael Carter. I'm going to take the Patrick wow. Mahomes and Garrett Wilson side all day. I think this guy's Tom Fullery, Jacob. Tom Fullery. I mean, I don't know. I. I love these kind of questions. Love talking dynasty. So it's Patrick Mahomes and Garrett Wilson for Justin Fields, Amon Ra, and Michael Carter. I mean, like, I, would you say, like, let's say that trade got uh, happened in one of our leagues? Would I, like that's kind of a fair trade, right? Like, would you blink an eye? It's a it's big time. I, I players. would blink an eye. I would blink an eye. Uh, I think Patrick Mahomes is still in this league for at least. A, another 10 years garrett wilson yeah, is in his I mean, rookie year justin garrett fields wilson, he's only yeah. shown us that he can run and let's be honest running yeah. quarterbacks have a very short lifespan in this league look what's happening to lamar jackson no, you're right actually i'm on ross and brown we don't know who his quarterback's gonna minute, be in the next couple um, of years i think i'm overvaluing i mean i really like justin fields to be honest but i might be overvaluing him a little bit in this scenario i would much rather like i was gonna say i would much rather have the patrick mahomes and garrett wilson side but it's not bad. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. MJ23, nonetheless, we thank you, man. Appreciate you coming out. Uh, please feel free to give us a like. If we get those questions right, be sure to subscribe at the end and come on back. Uh, he says, Zeke could get two more touchdowns. Sure, he's been on a touchdown streak, man. That's why he finds himself <laughs> in the top 20 this week. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Good call, Jacob. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, let's see. Brock Purdy, rookie. Yeah, there we go. No, he's not going to get the chance to play enough. That, I mean, let's be honest. They they're, they have offensive rookie of the year and defensive rookie of the year. And it's, you know, it's probably going to go to, oh, I mean, who's going to win offensive rookie of the year? That's a, Garrett I mean, Wilson? probably, but if like Kenneth Walker was definitely in the conversation. Before he got injured, he might even Wouldn't play you this say week. so. Uh, yeah, he might even play this week. Uh, Kenneth Walker, Garrett Wilson. Am I? Are we Chris Olave? I mean, Damian Pierce I mean, was in the conversation before nah, he started. Damian he Pierce was at the I beginning know, of the year. I think Damian Pierce still is the lead rookie rusher this season, if I'm not mistaken. But still, he's fallen off. But yeah, you're right. I think it's Garrett Wilson. I mean, it. It's not going to be Kenny Pickett. So it's going to be Garrett Wilson. Nah, no, 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 yeah. Kenny Pickett. Yeah. Uh, the fractal rain. I don't know, Ooh, but okay, if that's a picture of go. him and his girlfriend, that's, that's it a pretty definitely cool, is. That's a pretty cool picture, man. I like that a lot. Uh, very nice background. Uh, he says full PPR. He needs two flex plays this week. He's got Marquise Brown, Xavion Knight, DJ Dallas, James Cook, Traylon Burks, Darius Slayton, Westbrook, Akine. Um, right off the bat, I'm probably knocking out Darius Slayton and Westbrook Akine. DJ Dallas, there's still hope that uh, Kenneth Walker does play. And DJ Dallas is dealing with an injury of his own. So for the sake of this question, I'm just going to assume that Walker plays this week, even though it's unlikely. There is news that just came out. Uh, Robert Sala came out and said that Xavion Nate Knight is going to retain his role in the Jets' backfield. I don't necessarily know what that means, but with the news that Michael Carter – 
now longer injury designation going into this week. He's practicing in full mm-hmm. again. That might be a crazy backfield. These are tough questions. Traylon Burks also injured. I don't even know if he's playing this week. So you're just dealing with a lot of injury. I would go, here. okay, if Michael Carter's playing and Traylon Burks doesn't play, I would go Marquise Brown and James Cook. I'm going Marquise Brown and James Cook. See, Jacob, why shouldn't we have just said that from the beginning? You go know. straight. You're, you, we you're, like wasting time. I don't know. You don't like shooting the stuff, <laughs> man. You shoot the crap. No. I got a cough. Hey, they reason. need both. So we provide them with both. Hey, the fractal rain, man. There you have it. Marquise Brown, James Cook. Again, appreciate you another that. fire profile picture. Another fire profile picture. Our dude. viewers have the best profile pictures on YouTube. Yeah, unlike this guy, Jonah Bartley. He just says Watson. What is that supposed to mean? Oh, Christian Watson. I think he's it saying might, it might be too he late. Came on too late. It I might mean, be too late. If he was playing like that all year, absolutely. But you know what though? Late. Hold on, Jacob. Hold on. He came on too late, but we're talking Garrett about Garrett Wilson terms- has been better though. I know, but we're talking in terms of the fantasy season. There's a legitimate chance that after the bye, Christian Watson still has what five weeks to just dominate. What if he catches oh. a touchdown every single week? Like we okay, know. you're right. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, mid season. Garrett like, Wilson, like if Garrett Wilson slows down, sure. All right, sure, sure, sure. Uh, let's see, really quick. Fractal, by the way, thanks for stopping in, man. We appreciate you. Uh, be sure to give us a like. If we get it right, though, we get those calls right. Come on back, subscribe to the channel. If we get it wrong, come on back. Give us another track. We always appreciate it. Uh, Jacob, it's time, man. The time is getting away from us tonight, so let's get into our DFS plays of the week. I can't wait to see who you're playing Ooh, this week. Now, it's exciting. We did just start this, so technically we're only one week in. I played last week against the board, mighty three dollars. I had guys like Kenneth Walker, guys like Jimmy Garoppolo, both guys that went down with injury. So the day did not go well for me. Uh, but, oh, is this your solo? Yeah, DFS this is lineup? what I did. Solo did you last actually week. submit it? For a yeah, I went in a three dollar league. It was it was fine, nice. and I got I got absolutely bewittled. Uh, but you went first last week, uh, or two weeks ago. Do you want me to go mm-hmm. first this week? Yeah, go ahead. Perfect, man. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna edit my. And we are right actually here. playing a contest against each other, um, but we will not reveal what the buy in was or what the reward was. What the reward is? I don't like this. Might be the lowest ones possible. Maybe. Uh, let's see, man. Let's get into some DFS plays this week. Jacob and I are taking each other on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add it up here. This is my lineup. Fresh new look, fresh new team. Looking to go 2-0 and against Jacob. And I'm starting off with yeah, none other so than... Gabe's technically winning our our uh, <laughs> DFS head-to-head. But next I'm... year, we're going to do it all season long, so we'll have more of a sample size. So we'll see. Uh, listen up, man. Kirk Cousins... Uh, was my first pick. I decided to start from the QB and build up this week. He's kind of considered mid-tier with a $7,500 value. Uh, I really like his matchup this week, taking on Detroit. They give it up through the air. It was probably the cheapest, most expensive, if that makes sense. And so that's kind of what I went with. Um, I did end up pairing him up with Justin Jefferson, who you'll see in a minute. Running backs, I'm sticking with the same strategy, Jacob. So if I win this week, you might want to take a thing or two and learn <laughs> from me. Because I went with James Cook on my running back. He's considered a budget running back this week, $6,100. I went even deeper than that with my next pick, Kenyon Drake, uh, $5,600. She takes on the Pittsburgh Steelers this week. He's been averaging around seven or eight carries since Najee Harris's return. But you never know. Hoping that he can break one off this week. Stack right here with Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson. I love it. I'm on Ron St. Brown. He was on my lineup two weeks ago when I played you. Going to roll him out there again this week. Uh, taking on the Detroit Lions or taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Chris Godwin, welcome back to fantasy stardom. He was fantasy consistent. People were crapping on him that he wasn't doing what he was capable of. Capable of, But guess what? He's capable, folks. He's capable and he's putting up tremendous performances. He is my wide receiver three. I always punt the tight end position, baby, and I'm going with Tig Okano. I don't even know how to pronounce that. But I will say I did a little bit of research to find that he has been averaging one catch, not one catch. He's been averaging the last four weeks. 
He's had one catch of over 25 yards. And the last two weeks, he's gotten three catches apiece. So there's some hope that he might actually pop one off this week. He's my tight end. Elijah Moore, I couldn't believe his value. Uh, Listen, he came to life two weeks ago with Mike White. I loved it. People thought he was going to be able to replicate it two weeks in a row. He did it. Only two catches for a minuscule amount of yards. However, what I liked was the targets. He saw six targets. They're going to be throwing in this game against the Bills. It could be a grudge match. They could be trying to play catch up. I still think it's going to be a good game, and I still think Mike White is going to be slinging that ball around. Elijah Moore should benefit that 100%. And last but not least, two weeks ago when I played Jacob Owen with the Dallas Cowboys defense, I still like the Dallas Cowboys defense against the Houston Texans this week. That is my squad. Looking to go 2-0. and I will secede my team for Jacob to show his. Nice. No, I, I, I like your squad. Um, I don't know how you displayed it like that because mine looks completely different. <laughs> like... What do you I, I mean? Like, I don't know. Mine's like side to side. You'll see. You'll I told see. just go to edit lineup and you it'll pop up. Oh, is that is yeah. that how it is? I went to edit lineup so you'd still see the players on the side that are available. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's a little bit better. There we go. Okay, I like this better because you can see the price. You can see the price is a lot better for the players. Okay, sure, sure. sure. All right, so man. I'm excited. Is, this is ironic because we have some of the same. Picks, hey. which happens, which happens. That's okay. That's okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, God. Yeah, I gotta do this um, until my house is dirty, man. I gotta do this until we get you up there. All right, <clears throat> there we go. Okay, okay. Oh, well, okay. So, my strategy, and I guess I have to share this if we're like going on a podcast and giving people our opinions and all that. So, my strategy is like, I, I like to go stud at QB and stud at tight end and you'll see in a second and i like this because i'm kind of revealing my lineup let me i think you zoomed in a little bit didn't you yeah i took it up to 200 oh wow okay does that look good it looks fine to me yeah all right let's go so we got (laughs) (laughs) so i went with josh allen because you can never go wrong with josh allen i just like to have that advantage at qb in these dfs lineups like in my season long and my dfs i never want my quarterback to be the reason why I lose or the reason why I don't win. So I, I know he's expensive, but I'm always going, you know, Mahomes or Allen most of the time. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I build around other positions, but I like Josh Allen against the jets. I think this is possibly a game because look, the jets are good this year. So either it might not, it's not going to be necessarily a shootout, but, it could either be a close game where Josh Allen has to play the whole game, or he might want to make a statement and say, nah, this is my division, like, and just lay 35 points on him. So I feel confident in Josh Allen this week. I talked about it okay. earlier. Tony Pollard, he's going up against Houston. Oh. And I told you, love your ranking of him because he's going to have a heck of a matchup this week. And he's so explosive and just love to see that. I definitely went to the bargain bin on a few of these players in order to afford some of the other players. And that's where this comes in. I'm kind of just throwing in Jordan Mason of the San Francisco 49ers. He's kind of become the backup to Christian McCaffrey slash the other running back. Who's going to get touches. So if I'm going to look when you're scrolling around this area at 5,200, the options are not great. So I'm like, okay, (laughs) if I could throw Mason in there and he could somehow squeeze out, you know, eight fantasy points. I'm cool with that. So I went with Jordan Mason in the bargain bin here. Our first um, duplicate player, Chris Godwin, when I was doing this, like normally I want to get like a super stud at wide receiver, at least one. Right. And you got your, you got Justin Jefferson. But when I was looking at this, I was like, Ooh, Chris Godwin. I think he's underpriced here. Like, I don't think the DFS pricing has caught up to how great chris godwin has been i think they're and also factoring in this tough san francisco matchup but i think he's very gonna get true his this but because chris godwin gonna... plays in the slot a lot san francisco gives up a lot of points to the slot wide receiver if you remember that game against arizona when rondell moore got hurt and greg dorch came in and played the slot receiver he did very well against us and this is chris godwin playing with tom brady 
So I think Godwin's going to have a blow up game, but that's irrelevant because we're going to match points on that one. So <laughs> we'll see. Tyler Boyd, look, Tyler Boyd is my boy. I always look, Tyler Boyd has the potential to go off for 30 points any game. It's only going to happen two or two to four times a year, but he always has the potential to do that. So at 5,900, I do not mind uh, throwing Tyler Boyd in there. Tyler Boyd. I said I was starting DJ Chark in my Dynasty League. I'm also starting him in my DFS lineup. Love to put my dark horse into my DFS lineup. I think that's awesome. I already explained why I like DJ Chark this week. And here it goes. Here's where I spent up. I'll tell you a secret. I mean, this might ruin all of our DFS videos going forward. I always put Travis Kelsey in if he's available. The week that we did it, I don't think the Chiefs were available because we did Thanksgiving slate. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. If if he's not available, I try to go for a sure thing. And I think he's the might be the only sure thing at tight end right now. So going Kelsey. I also am going George Pickens. I talked about him. I think he has a great matchup this week. I think he gets back on track. Look, fantasy football is about, you know, ups and downs, right? These players, the averages. He had a bad week last week. Maybe he has a good week this week. And then I also went with the Dallas Cowboys. So So, we uh, are matching on Chris Godwin in Dallas. Yeah, Uh, There's still a lot of room there. A lot of room. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I think this is going to be a good one. I think this is going to be a good one. You know, what's always funny is like last week or two weeks ago when we played, we were thinking about how like, oh, we're going against each other. And I ended up beating you, but not by a lot, I don't even think. And it's so funny. But when you compared it to like the actual like oh, masses. Yeah. We it entered was... a, a, a major contest, we would lose. But <laughs> oh it, it's full gosh. of teachers and bots, right? So yeah. It's and, full... and fan Teachers and bots. And they Fandu rigged the games. Yeah. They rigged the games. Uh, but there you have it, folks. Those are our DFS plays this week. Looking to go 2-0 and against Jacob. What do you think about our lineups? Who do you think is going to win the matchup? Let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, love to hear from you. Again, DFS lineups for week 14 of the fantasy football season. <clears throat> Sarge says, do you think the Broncos versus the Chiefs is a defensive game or where the chiefs go up. I definitely think we're not going to see a Baltimore Denver type game. The chiefs are just too good, but I do yeah. think you can temper your expectations. Uh, it, this could be a game that's like 17, 10, maybe 17, seven, like the just the Broncos aren't good on offense. And a lot of people are playing the Kansas city defense this week, uh, but I could also see it going like 21, 10 21 7 like they're gonna take control of this game but they're not gonna explode like they usually do no i agree i think uh, on top of that it's like if if the chiefs are winning let's say it's 21 to 3 it's like i think they're just gonna wear the clock down and get out of there like they're not gonna just lay it on like they have no reason to lay it on denver like it's just you know so i think it's gonna be uh i don't think they're gonna go off but also, you know, uh, like one of their best defensive players, Patrick Sertain, who I, if you could tell me I can take any player from the NFL and put him on the Niners other than a quarterback, let's take quarterbacks out. I think it sure. would be Patrick Sertain because that dude is a monster. Like, um, but like the the Chiefs wide receivers are kind of, I wouldn't say irrelevant, but you're not worried about, they're not the reason why they're winning. They're winning because of Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid. And, you know, so, yeah, I think it'll be a, yeah, not a, not a shootout game at all, but the Chiefs will go off enough. Fair enough. Uh, Yeatman143 says, Garrett Wilson or Chris Godwin rest of season. That's tough, man. That's tough. Uh, I'd probably go Garrett Wilson, Mm. to be honest with you. I just kind of pulled up while I was waiting for Jacob to finish your thoughts. I pulled up Garrett Wilson's end of season schedule. Takes on the Buffalo Bills, like we said, talked about earlier. Middle of the pack, 13th against the pass. Then they got Detroit and Jacksonville. Juicy matchups. Um, and then ends the season against Seattle in the fantasy playoffs or fantasy championship week. Uh, it's it's He's got a better schedule than Godwin. So for factoring that in, because like I said, after week eight, that's all I really ever think about are those matchups. We know what these defenses are, and we know what the – Yeah, and there's no Mike Evans 
in in New York. So I would go right. Garrett Wilson as well. I mean, Chris Godwin. No, juicy he's been matchup. so solid. He's so got solid. a juicy matchup against San Francisco, uh, Cincinnati, Arizona, Carolina, all middle of the pack. But Garrett Wilson, man, so explosive. And Mike White has just opened that can on everybody. Yeah, and this is about – what do we we talk about it all the time? Like, do you want to go with the safe play? That's Chris Godwin. You want a guy who can blow up for forty? Garrett Wilson. Not Garrett to say Wilson. either of like they both can do both. You know, they both can be consistent and solid. They both can blow up. But I, I uh, think Garrett Wilson is more prone to blow up. The only thing I worry about though is that you know it, it's obvious that teams are going to start scheming against Garrett Wilson. So how is he going to handle that additional pressure? Um, but I, he's just too good, man. Well, if you're too season, good, I'm sure teams scheme against Justin Jefferson. They can I know, it out. I know, I know. <laughs> but you're uh, right. You're you're not that like they're the Jets are just kind of a new thing, right? So their teams are still figuring them out. Sure. I don't think it's happened yet. Don't think it's happened yet. Yeet Man came back with the double questions. Should I trade JT Whoa. for Swift? Uh, I'm not sure if this is dynasty. If it's redraft, it's way too late. I'd stick. I with would say just, no. I'd, I'd stick both. with Jonathan Taylor. I would say no on both. Even yeah. look, I absolutely love Swift, but if you're doing a dynasty draft right now, I think most people are taking JT. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeet man, we appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, be sure to give us a like. We gave you some advice today. If we get it right, come on back. Give us a subscribe. If we got it wrong, come on back. Give us another try. Uh, Jacob, it's been a great show, man. I appreciate absolutely. you. I know you appreciate me. That's right. I'm speaking for you. Uh, but it's time to get out of here, man. It's time to get out of here. So mm-hmm. for all you all listening out there, thank you so much for stopping on by, giving us your questions, giving us your thoughts. If you're listening to this later in the week, don't be afraid to drop a comment down there. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know your thoughts on our thoughts. Let's have a discussion. We're always down to do that. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at First Round Fantasy. You can find us here on YouTube at First Round Fantasy. You can also find us anywhere you listen to your podcast, most notably Spotify or Apple Premium at First Round Fantasy. Uh, we got a Sunday morning tailgate this week pending. No, we should be there. There we go. I like it. Uh, <laughs> with that being said, I don't got a lot to say. It's been a good show. Jacob, do you got a hot take lined up or am I doing this today? Uh, go ahead. <clears throat> In week 14 of the fantasy football season, we see the takeover we so desperately needed. James Cook comes in and dominates the Buffalo Bills backfield. He goes 18 for 102 against the Jets, and no team has gone out for over 100 yards against the Jets this season. James Cook finally does it in week 14, and he puts to bed the Jevin Singletary's owners and all the people that are starting him in week 14. And this hot take is going way too long, but James Cook, 18 for 102. He's a top five running back this week in the fantasy football world. You heard it here first. Have a great week. Good luck. Peace.